Executive Chef here at Farmhouse Academy. And we are um, so excited to offer this um, llama cake decorating class with Chef Annie. Um, we're so excited to have her here today to show you guys how to decorate a llama cake. So um, some of you may have participated in a unicorn cake class. Um, it was a, a parent-child bacon bond that we had um, a few weeks back. And so um, now they're offering the llama cake and um, Chef Annie is going to um, teach you guys how to make that. Um, we have the kit here that if you purchase this kit, this is exactly what you're gonna receive. So Annie's going to unpack it, show you exactly what's in here, and then show you how to put your llama cake together. Um, and then if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to post them in the comments or shoot us an email and we'll make sure we get them answered for you. And then when you're finished with your llama cake, we would love to see pictures of it. Um, so I'm gonna send it over to Chef Annie. I'm gonna be here to help her for whatever she needs, um, but she's gonna unpack this kit and show you what's in it. Okay, hi guys. So we got this kit right here and, and we will, what we see will be a cake board. You guys would get two, um, Cakes, six inch cakes, and they're already gonna be level for you, so you don't even have to worry about that. And you guys will have your buttercream and some of the heat dyes, so you don't even have to worry about that either. And for the ears and the little accents, you're gonna have fondant ready for you, and it's gonna be exactly what you need. You might have a little, little leftover, and that's fine, you could always eat it, so that's always great. You're also gonna get a piping bag and a tip, which is gonna be really helpful to make uh, the llama spur. There's two things. We're also going to have some to, uh, toothpicks, that way you're able to um, make uh, the ears and it's easier just to like poke them in at the end. So what I would suggest you guys to start with is the ears. If you can make this a couple hours ahead, even a whole day ahead, that will be perfect. But you know like an hour beforehand it will be fine or the first thing you do. That way it gives them enough time for them to dry. Okay, so to make the ears, you guys are going to use your white and pink fondant. So what I would suggest is go and try to get like two equal parts, give or take. You don't have to be perfect, it's okay. And then the same thing with the pink. Okay, and then what I would do, I would roll them each in a ball. And then this part is really up to you guys. It just depends like how you want to make your ears, how big, how small. So what I would suggest is kind of pinch one part and then go around and you kind of get this kind of like a teardrop shape. Now I'm kind of moving it at the bottom with my fingers, but that's fine. So you kind of just pinch it. And then when you go down the table, you kind of just like press your thumb on it. And it kind of looks like an ear. What I would do, use your two pinkies and then just kind of shape it. And then to flatten it, you should use your whole hand. And then you end up with this kind of like a teardrop. And again, the ears, you can make them as big or as small as you want. And then we try to get the other one to look a little bit the same. And this is a little less smooth, so we can always you know, smooth it out. And and playing with Play-Doh. Yes. Mm -hmm. so again, all the kids love that. <laughs> and then again, you put it down, and you want to put it with your thumb, and then shape the little point with your pinkies, and then your whole hand. And then you can put them next to each other, make sure they kind of look a little similar. This one's a little different, so it, it takes some time, some practice, and then. The thing about this is if you don't like it, you can always just start again. Like this, there we go. That kind of looks okay. So for the inside part, we're gonna use the pink and we're gonna do the exact same technique. And then just push it in. Oops. And then pinch it at the top. And then we do the same thing with the second one. 
So we want to do it uh, far enough ahead of time so that it has time to dry, right? Yes, because um, it, right now it's a little, it is standing, but sometimes depending on, on the weather, really, like it could be a little humid, the ears might just flop down. So okay. if we give them time to dry, then they'll stand up and they'll, they'll look prettier and, and they'll make it so much easier. Perfect. So the longer you can let them dry, the better, right? Yes. But at yes. least do this first. Yes. Sounds good. I'm going to push it down with your thumb. And then just put them next to each other. Make sure they kind of look the same. What I really will focus on is just a little point. The round part at the bottom really, like, it, it doesn't really matter that much. You, you can't really see it, like, when you're... When everything's when you really put complete. It in the cake. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we're going to put it inside of the cake like this. And then this part is going to be covered with buttercream. So I wouldn't really worry too much about it. And then you just put it on top. So this fondant right now, I've been working with it. So it's a little sticky. But if you want it to, if it, if it doesn't want to stick to the fondant, just use like a little bit of water, just dab it, and then you can always place it. So the water will help the two pieces of fondant stick together. Yes, it'll Perfect. connect. It'll if you need it. Yes. So this one is really actually, it's a little sticky. That's why I don't, I don't need it right now. And you just shape it on there and then you're all set. Cute. So now that you have this done, what I would do, use a toothpick. And then I would put it right at the bottom like this. And you kind of want to go halfway to make sure that the weight is distributed equally. Kinda like that. And then you just wanna put this to the side and now we can work on the cake. Perfect, so let's put those over here. There we go. All right. Kinda help you get things organized here. Okay, so next we're going to start stacking our cake. So let's unwrap our cake first. Okay, so we're going to be using the white buttercream. And then what I would do would be to add a little bit of the buttercream at the bottom. That way it acts like glue. When we put our cake on the top, and then we'll slide around. And so the buttercream should be kept at room temperature, right? Until they're ready to use it. Yes. And the if it's particularly cold in your house, or if you're having a hard time spreading it, it can be microwaved for like seconds, right? If it gets a little bit hard. Yes. Um, but don't over microwave it because then you will end up with melted buttercream. So literally put it in the microwave for like three seconds. Chuck it, stir it. If you mix it, it kind of helps it loosen it up, right? Mm -hmm. um, so just make sure your buttercream is nice and spreadable. If it's not, then microwave it for another couple seconds um, so that you can get that texture that spreads easily over your cake. Yeah, so you want it to be soft. That way, when you're spreading it, you really just like pop the buttercream on, and you just you're, what you're doing, you're just pushing the buttercream. We don't really want to touch the cake with our. Offset, that's how you get all the crumbs, and at the end, you end up just bringing up the cake and the buttercream with you. So you're just gonna do this like side to side motion and just spread it. What kind of pressure? Real light, medium pressure? So it really depends on the buttercream, okay. but if it's soft and you let it give it enough time, it should be it should be like very light, really. Okay, light pressure. Yeah. And then the way you wanna hold your spatula, you wanna use your finger, and the idea really is that you're going like this with your finger. So just pretend like your special is your index finger and just go back and forth. An extension of your finger. Yes. And yeah. so if they don't have an offset spatula at home, um, what advice do you have for them as far as tools? Okay, so I would just, anything that looks like this. So if you think about it, maybe like a butter knife. We have a butter knife. Right here. So that would really help because it's the same idea. It's a little smaller, so it's going to take you a little bit longer. So what I'm going to do, actually, instead of putting my cake like this, I'm going to put it upside down. That way, this this has a little crumbs, a little long crumbs, and that way you have like this really nice edge. That way you just pop it right on top. And we just want to turn it, make sure that it's kind of even. 
like this. So if you don't have, I have a uh, turntable right here. If you don't have one, you don't need it. This is just a really great tool to have. But really, you can honestly just move the board around, pick it up, just look at it, make sure it's straight. And if if it's not perfect, that's okay because we're going to cover it in buttercream and then we don't have a problem. Okay, so that's there. And then what we want to do is just add like a light uh, crumb coat. So this very, very thin buttercream all around. And then all we have to do is just pick it up and put a bunch. So what I like to do is just add a lot of buttercream to it and then just push it up. That way I'm not going back and forth, back and forth. So I like to cover up the whole top first. And then you know how I have, you can see I have a lot of extra. I just go and I push it up. And then this part, I mean, I'm doing it kind of fast just because I've done it for a long time. But you know, you can take your time with it. There's no rush. One of the reasons we decided to do this video, guys, um, as a recorded video instead of a live class, which I know a lot um, of chefs right now are doing live classes, but we feel like, especially for kids, they're kind of harder to follow along. Um, so feel free to pause this, um, you know, stop it, replay it, rewind it, um, take as much time as you need um, during these steps. Um, and... So that's why we kind of decided um, to do a virtual class, but to give you guys a recorded video instead of a live class um, where you guys need us to slow down um, or you don't have the ability to pause. So um, to go ahead and, and pause or rewind and um, get your cake crumb coated and press play once you're done. Um, but take your time on your beautiful masterpiece. So you can't wait to see the pictures of them. <laughs> so right here you see, you know, I don't have enough buttercream, so you know, we're just gonna go back. And then this time, instead of putting it at the top, we're just gonna go right where it needs it. And then just press it in and then just turn it. So the crumb coat is just to make sure that you don't pick up any crumbs from your cake onto your final coat at the top. Like crumbs are fine, like they taste it's cake, right? But at the at right at the top when you want to have your finished product, you don't want to see it. You just want to make it pretty. Whenever it, like you feel like the buttercream is coming to the top, I would just grab my container and I just scrape it off. And then just pick it back up. But that way it's at the point and it's where I want it to be. So what I would really focus on is getting this middle part filled. That way it's even. And crumb coats take a lot of practice, guys. I know a lot of you have um, learned them in our classes. Um, don't get discouraged. It does take a lot of practice um, to do the crumb coat. Um, but Annie's got some great advice, and just keep trying. So at the end, you see like there's some spots that have too much. I'll just grab my spatula and just go do a whole like swipe of it around. And again, this does not have to be perfect. So this is the part that we really shouldn't focus on too much. And it's still pretty light pressure, right? Yes. Okay. Because if you push too hard, then you're going to pull up a lot of those crumbs. Yeah, you're going to pull up all the crumbs and you have all the buttercream that you just put on. So at the top, you always get this lip. All you have to do is just kind of go from the side and then bring it to the middle. To the side, bring it to the middle. And when you come to the middle, this is always really light. Don't think you have to like push your special into the cake. You just lift it up like this. That way it kind of gets a little smooth. And again, this part doesn't matter. It's just so we don't get like this really thick lip on the on the edge. And then that's it. And that's your crumb coat. Beautiful. So what I would suggest is you guys putting this in the fridge for like 15, 20 minutes. The more time that you have, it's gonna be, it's gonna help you guys um, come out with a, a, a cake, a prettier cake. The finished product. Yes. yes. So normally when you know that the cake is ready, you would touch the buttercream and then it won't come up. Obviously I just put this one so it's still on my finger. Still a little sticky. But that's fine. It, it's like butter, you know, butter's hard when it's in the fridge. 
So just put it in the fridge, maybe like 20, 30 minutes or until it's firm to the touch. Um, I don't I don't need to make this right now just because I've done this for a long time. <laughs> but it really helps. It really, it really helps yeah, too. I, I agree. It does help if you guys pop it in the fridge. Um, maybe clean up a little bit, get ready for your next, put it in the fridge while you fill your icing bag. Um, Andy's going to show you next um, how to um, fill the bag. Everyone's going to get a, um, a tip um, to make your flowers um, and your stars to um, shape the llama's fur. So she's going to show you kind of how to put this together. So um, pop this in the fridge, at least while you do that, and it's going to really work to your benefit. Okay, so we have our piping bag, and all we're going to do is we're going to put a tip in. So this is a star tip. This one is a 1M by Wilton. And then what we do, we just match it point to point. And just put it in the bag. And now our bag is right here. You're able to cut it right now. But when I put the buttercream, I might, it might fall out. So we're just going to wait till the end. So what I like to do, I actually like to fold the bag like this and then add the buttercream. Um, but something that makes it easier is using like a really tall cup. And the same thing, you're folding it over, but this time you're gonna fold it over the cup. So what this helps is when you're putting the buttercream, you can scrape it off on the side and it makes it easier for you to fill the bag. So now we're gonna use- This is one of our favorite hacks <laughs> for filling um, bags. It makes it so easy. Yeah, that way you can pull, uh, put as much as you want. And sometimes your hand gets tired because you're putting in a lot. So just grab your buttercream and again, just fill the bag and then just scrape off the side. What I would suggest you guys to do is try to fill it as much as you can. And by that, it's like, halfway so you want you don't want to really fill the bag more than halfway no because when you're applying pressure sometimes it comes out through the back yep so if you guys have some string or yarn or something at home um, or even a rubber band while the kids are using the bags one thing we do at farmhouse academy um, for the kids when they're decorating um, with icing or frosting is we just tie the end of the bag um, so that um, it's not 100% foolproof. Um, it, you know, sometimes it still kind of pop out the top, especially with the Royal icing, but it kind of helps remind the kids to, um, to kind of put their hand up by the string and not squeeze in the middle. Um, and it does help a little bit keep the icing inside the bag so it doesn't completely come out. So if you have some string at home and the kids are going to do it, you can kind of tie the top of the bag and that helps. So whenever you put the buttercream, I always end up there and you get this gap. Don't push it down. What you want to do is grab it by the top and then just shake it down. What that does, it kind of lets the air come out and then it just fills the bag by itself. And then we're not pushing it. So what this did, this is how much you want to fill it. You don't want to fill too much because at first it didn't look like a lot, but now it's all filled all the way down. So what I would do, grab right here where there's no more buttercream and I would twist it and at this point do the rubber band and the string the tie if you want or a tie anything just so that it won't come out to the back it's not necessary but it really really helps the older kids might not need it or for little kids it's helpful to have it tied off so right here at this point what I would do I will push the tip down just a little bit and you're gonna kind of eyeball where the middle of the tip was just like around here and we're gonna use your scissors and then just cut it and then just kind of push the tip out and see the buttercream is coming out already so what I would do at this point always push from the top I will grab my container I didn't put all the buttercream in and that's totally fine we could always refill it just push it out that way we get the air out and we start getting a, a good amount of buttercream out and there's a little bit of air so what I would do is Open it again, and then shake it down. But do this on top of your container, that way if you get some buttercream out, it won't fall all over the place. So what I would recommend, again, in your container, start practicing how to do the little stars. So what I would do, I would just do like little dots. They're like, oh, okay, there's enough coming out. And then the rosettes are basically just circles. You're like, oh, okay, I got the hang of it. And then now we can start working on our cake. So I'm gonna set this aside. Yes. 
Okay, now that we've taken the cake out of the fridge, we're gonna focus on covering the front of the cake. That's gonna be the face with our leftover white buttercream. So we're just gonna grab a big dollop and then just put it right on the front. It, you don't have to cover the whole cake so that way you don't waste too much buttercream and it's not too much buttercream that you're gonna eat. So just focus on one section of the cake. Just go do that back and forth motion. And then once you have it there, don't press too hard. Otherwise you're gonna lift all of the buttercream back up. And then this part, again, it does, the sides don't have to be perfect because they're gonna be covered. So I would just focus mostly like on the middle. So this cake is really easy because there's not a lot of detail to it that has to be perfect. So for the last, the last part that I'm going to do is just grab it, kind of not exactly towards the edge, but kind of like a little bit before that. And then just do one last, like the swipe. And then just bring it out. That way you kind of end up with a smooth surface. And then that's it. So what I would do, kind of use the leftover uh, white, and you can mix it with your pink, and that way you have extra buttercream. Or you can just leave it, it doesn't matter. Okay, the next thing that I'm gonna do, you're gonna use a toothpick, uh, like a little knife, or a little dowel, anything that's kind of pointy. And you wanna create kind of like a heart. Bring this one right here. And you kind of want to look where the middle is. You kind of want to create like this heart. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then, yes, you are writing on the buttercream, but you won't be able to see these lines because they're going to get covered. So that looks about right. And this is up to you. Everybody makes different hearts. So then what I'm gonna do, we're gonna get our piping back and then we're just gonna do uh, little stars. To make the stars, you're just, you're just gonna press on it very lightly and then pull. And we're gonna do that outline, that way we create the face and then we're able to go around it and then just cover the whole cake. So this is what I'm gonna, I'm, I would start right in the middle. Press and then just pull. And then do that all the way around the cake, like so. So something that I would do is kind of get level with it and you yourself look at it like this. When we do cake decorating in class, sometimes we go get chairs and we'll just sit in a chair um, and decorate it so that you're kind of level and you're not having to squat. So if you're at your kitchen table or at a counter, um, you can just kind of sit in a chair. Yeah, well, you're not, you're not like level. this, and you're, <laughs> you're lower, you're level with the cake, and you're looking at it, and you're taking your time doing it, but if I do like this, you can't see it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna bring it over. And then you kind of have that, that heart outline from the face, and then this is the only part that would be like considered difficult. At this point, we're just gonna go and cover the rest of the cake. So to make it really easy, you could continue doing this little star form around it and just fill in all the gaps. But if you're trying to go a little more um, fancier, fancy, I would do like little rosettes. So I think the easiest way to do that would be like at the top. So what you would do, you start kind of like not exactly on the edge, but a little bit inside the cake, bring in some buttercream and then go around it. And then kind of when you finish your circle, stop applying pressure and then just pull it around. And that way you create uh, different textures on your cake and it makes you like, I, I feel like it's a little bit prettier. And then to break it off a little bit, maybe do some stars around it and then do a, another rosette again. So again, you don't want your tip to be touching the cake. You kind of want it to be floating on the top.
and then press and then go around. Basically your buttercream is falling. So at the end, stop applying pressure and then come around. And then you just do that all around your cake. There is um, nothing, there's no rolls at this point. So you just do whatever you like the most. And you just go around it. So you can fill in with rosettes or dots. Um, give your cake some character. And everybody's cake is going to be different. Nice. So while you finish the cake, why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience um, as a cake decorator and a pastry chef? Okay, so I actually taught myself first. Um, I started watching TV, a lot of YouTube, and I don't, I don't know if you guys heard of some some baking shows out there. I'm not gonna say names, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, and anything on YouTube, I just really taught myself. And when I noticed that this is something that I really wanted to do, I decided to go to school for it. And I went to school, I went to the Corner Blue here in Chicago, and I got my um, associates in baking and pastry. And then I started working at a bakery out in Hinsdale, and I've been doing uh, cakes really this whole time. Even when I don't, I, don't, yeah. I'm, I don't teach out here, I just make cakes. And they're all different, which is really exciting. So right now, I actually just ran out of buttercream. I'm gonna grab my bag and undo it again. And now it's all icky. So this makes it hard to fill. Again, we're gonna go back and use our cup. And then we'll put it right back in the cup. Flip it over. And then we're gonna use the rest of our pink. Nice. And so Annie makes some really, really beautiful cake. She um, did my daughter's birthday cake for her roller skating party. There was a big roller skate on top of it. Um, but you, if they wanna check out your other work, um, what is your Instagram? So on Instagram, I'm under sugar31, uh, sugar you spell it out, and you spell out the number 31, spell out sugar31 sugar 31. spelled out, perfect. Yeah. And then you can see some work that I've done, and it's really cool because I'm you able, I'm able to compare the work when I first started, right at the beginning, to what I've done now, and it, it's really cool. I think anybody should start like uploading, or at least taking pictures of your work. And that way you can tell like your work progressing and you're eventually getting better. And sometimes you kind of look, you're like, I don't like my cake. But you just gotta look back and remember, you're like, I'm just starting. And when you compare it to the first cake that you ever made, you're like, wow, I've, I've come a long way. You can see how, how much better you're getting. And I know a lot of the kids that we have in and out of Farmhouse Academy want to be bakers or pastry chefs um, when they grow up. And that's a great way to kind of document everything that you've done and see the progression and really um, see how, how much better you're getting with every single cake you decorate. I think that's a really good idea. Um, we're really excited to have Annie on our team at Farmhouse Academy. Um, I have been teaching cake decorating skill, um, cake decorating classes um, in the past and my skills are pretty intermediate. I'm not horrible, but I'm definitely not at the level that Annie is. So I'm really glad that we have um, a pastry chef so that you guys can learn some of the more advanced techniques. Um, coming up in the summertime, um, she's gonna be teaching some of our decorating camps. We have nailed it camps, fingers crossed. Um, we are really, really hoping that um, our camps go unharmed um, by our current situation. Um, and Andy's going to be teaching some more advanced kind of cake decorating stuff for us. Um, so we're really, really excited because I know a lot of these kids that we have, um, that, we've had, that we've had in these classes are becoming more and more advanced and we wanted to be able to give you guys the instruction that you need to learn new things. So Annie will be providing that very, very soon. And um, all right, and she's going to grab more buttercream to finish the back of the cake. Okay, so again, this cup really, really helps because yeah. that way you don't get so messy. Buttercream is a messy, it's a messy job, but there's ways to try to be clean. <laughs> and messes are okay as long as you clean them up. I always tell the kids here, I'm like, it's okay to make a mess. 
um, while you're cooking in your kitchen, but if you clean up your mess, your parents will probably let you do it again. Um, if you leave a mess for mom to clean up, she might not let you bake again. So clean up your mess. The most important thing is try to just clean as you go. Yeah. That way it doesn't build up. Exactly. Otherwise you're just stuck at like, oh my gosh, there's so much work. If you have a brother or sister, like a little brother or sister who wants to help, tell them that they're your sous chef and um, have them, you know, clear off your garbage. Yeah, every two ways you go. <laughs> Turn a sibling into your assistant. <laughs> And then tell them when you get done, they can have a piece of cake. Give them an incentive. <laughs> so again, right here, I'm gonna move this one. And you just put it over your bowl and just shake it and this way, that way. Again, the air comes out. Because if you leave air in the bag whenever you're piping, you're just gonna, kind of like when ketchup just happens, butters. it's just gonna splash all over the place. And you're never gonna get your you better clean the way it was. Again, just push out a little bit to make sure that the air is out. And all we have to do is just the back. It's looking so cute so far. So I'll just go this way so that you guys can see. So everyone's gonna get one of these tips. So it's a star tip um, that's gonna come with your kit and it's reusable, obviously. So if you don't already have one of these tips, um, hang on to it because it's really helpful um, for doing a lot of things. It makes these beautiful rosettes. Um, it makes really beautiful stars. Um, and uh, in general, the, the star tip, there's so much you can do with it. Um, what, else, what else, now that they have this tip, Annie, what else can they do with this star tip? Oh, the star chip is very versatile. So again, we're doing these rosettes. We're doing these little stars. Um, you can actually do borders around your cake. And I'm going to show you guys in this little part. You can do shells. So what you would do, you would use, like right here, I'm using your, my index finger. And you kind of just want to do like a, again, like a little dollop. And then bring it up. And then just go, do like a little like mountain type thing. And this is how you create the borders with this tip. And you just create these shells that you see like on um, almost all the cakes that you've ever eaten. It's, it's a very yeah. It's it's a very um, any cake that you've gotten at a grocery store. Yes, <laughs> it's probably had those on. It, it's very traditional to do this. Yeah. You know, everybody everybody's like that's where they start actually, just making shells. So you could cover this whole thing in shells. So the point of the llama cake is just to do like all these different like techniques. And with shells, you just you're able to do so many like really cool concepts. That looks great. So use the cake to practice for your stars, yeah, like, your rosettes, your shells. What makes this like even prettier is the combination of all of them, because you gotta pretend it's fur, and it's you know it's all different, and you give it more texture, and then at the end you just turn around, go around. If there's some spots that you can still see a little bit of white, you could always cover it in fun and um in buttercream. You want to give it a little bit more like volume, just keep adding. You're like, oh, I still have some more. So again, if you like a lot of buttercream, you could just keep going. But right now I'm going to stop. So here, now it's all covered. We have our face. And do you guys remember the ears that we had made at the beginning? So hopefully by now, it, they have enough time to dry. And we've also, um, Annie also made some ahead of time that have, have had even longer to dry. Um, so I will put them on a piece of parchment paper or something that's not sticky because if you put them like on your table, they might stick to the table. So the parchment paper that came with your kit. And then when you want to lift them up, they might be a little like stuck to the paper even. So just lift it gently, that way you don't misshape them. And then that way they're... They kind of look how they started. <laughs> so the longer, the more time that they have, the easier for them to stand up. And then at this point, again, it's all up to you. You're like, hmm, where do I like it better? So I have to turn the cake towards me so that I can... I'll take this. That way I can judge like the placement of it. 
you just kind of want to grab them at the same time think oh, maybe around here and you're just gonna push them in that's why I said the bottom of the ear really didn't matter that much don't focus on it because you can't see it. it's gonna be covered by the buttercream and that way you already have your ears. The last thing we're gonna do is the face. So you guys actually also get a little bit of black fondant. You're definitely gonna have extra of this too. So what we wanna do, we just wanna do like a little like eyes, kinda, kinda like a half circle. And then the mouth. The, again, this is all up to you guys. You guys can look at pictures online. I'm going to do it one way, but you guys can definitely do it a different way. So this fondant actually isn't as sticky as the first one. So what I'm going to do is actually knead it. Basically, we're just going to play around with the fondant. Just warm it up a little bit. Make it easier to work with. So your hands kind of warm it. Yeah. As you knead it. And then, you know, this is fine. <laughs> and then eventually, it kind of comes together. It, it even looks softer at this point. And then your hands are pretty warm. So as you're working it, 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 it gets softer. And now it gets stickier, just like the ears were earlier. Every time you get fondant, you always want to eat it. You know, there, there might be some air stuck in it. Or there might be like some parts that are a little bit dry versus the inside that is not so much, but we want to get it all consistent. And with small amounts, you just play with it. It's okay if it breaks. You could always just put it back together. Okay, so I always like to do roll it up in a ball. And you're like, maybe get it like half of this much. And then what I would do, kind of start creating this little log. And then you're gonna use your fingers. And you're just gonna go back and forth. Make a rope. You're making this, yeah, but the, when you're making this rope, you kinda wanna add consistent pressure to it. And the way to make it longer, you kinda just grab your fingers and you're going, you're stretching it out. The more pressure you add to it, the longer it gets. And then you see that there's parts that are thinner than others, that's because we apply too much pressure on this side and not on this part. Now let's even it out. Again, all this, this takes um, practice. So just getting it thin enough. Mm -hmm. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. So well, I like doing ropes because you're able kind of to like match them to each other and see that it's um, thick all the way around. It's like the same thickness so one eye is not thinner than the other. So right now, my rope is getting a little bit too long. So I'm gonna cut it in half, and then I'm gonna work on this half. So what I would suggest is just working in smaller sections. Cause you're gonna need so little of this, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Or you, you guys really don't need a lot of this at all. So there's gonna be plenty to eat. Yep, and then the thing, again, the thing about this, if you, if you don't like the way the eye comes out, you can always redo it. And at this point is the ending, so you have a lot of time. <laughs> so again, I so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna compare it to my cake. And I'm like, well, that's a little bit too big still. So I'm gonna do it a half again. So right now, I'm rolling it on top of parchment paper, which makes it really easy because it doesn't stick. And you guys can do this too, and if you feel like it's getting a little sticky, you guys can always add a little bit of cornstarch or powdered sugar. And that'll help it to roll. Either. That'll help it to roll, and that way it won't stick. Perfect. So see, I kind of made this part a little thicker than this part, so we're just going to keep rolling it a little bit. There we go. So now I have this, and what I'm going to do, again, we're going to keep cutting it in half. 
and that way they kind of they're kind of about the same the same size and we're gonna do this half circle shape like this and then at this point we just kind of see one part's gonna be a little thinner so I'm gonna flip it flick it out just a little bit and that's gonna be like the eyelash and this part's thin, so this is going to be the eyelash, but we're going to flip it this way. Okay, so right now, your buttercream should be a little sticky. If not, you can always add a little bit of water. You're going to add a little bit of water with your finger right, like where you want your eye to be at. And the cool thing about working with fondant is that you can take it off if you don't like it. Oops. Do you want water? Uh, yes, a little bit. All right. So at this point, what really, really helps is getting eye level with it. And then trying to place it. Where is your water? Thank you. So for this eye, let's add a little bit of water to it. Okay, very, very little. You just wanna do it with your finger so you don't add way too much. And then maybe dry your hand a little bit. And then put the next eye right next to it. Okay, now that you have your eyes, again, go back eye level with it and then play around with it. So I would suggest, again, Toothpicks is my best friend in this, this little project of ours, and then just move it. That way you're moving it a little bit at a time. I kind of know make the eyelash a little more pointy, so I'm gonna move that up. And then you want to get them as even as possible, but it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? We're going to eat it anyway. So, I mean, it's not really going to matter. <laughs> okay. And then for the mouth, again, we're just going to grab one, another rope. We're gonna, I think it's a little bit too big, so I'm going to cut it in half again. And I'm just going to roll it out. So, I'm gonna kind of just put it on. So another thing that you can do, just put it on the cake and see if you like it. You're like, mm, it's a little bit too big. So we're gonna keep rolling it. Or if you want another thing, just put it in your hand and go back and forth like this, if that makes it easier. There's so many ways to do this. There's not just one way. So whatever works for you guys, do it that way. I'm gonna cut this in half. And then just press it down here. And then again, we can, you can use your fingers or a toothpick. Kind of just to shape the mouth the way you want it to. And then just lightly press it in. Okay, and then from here, you guys, if you guys want to add more details to it, it's really up to you. Um, I want to give my llama one more lash. I'm just going to grab a little piece and just Blow it out with my fingers. Get a little bit of water and put it right here on the edge of each eye.
and then just just fix any little detail with your toothpick or your fingers whatever you guys would like and that's it guys yes it looks so beautiful so i hope you guys had fun decorating your llama cakes um if you're watching this video and you haven't bought the kit yet you can actually buy it on our website still um and then come back to the video and watch it um but we'll have these llama kits available it's a six inch cake it's a nice um you know, smaller size cake, because I know everyone's stuck at home with like just their immediate family, so you guys aren't going to be eating cakes for weeks. It's not like nine inches. Um, <laughs> it's just a little cake for your immediate family to enjoy. Um, and I hope you guys are really, really proud of your cakes. Um, send us pictures. We would love to see pictures um, of your llama cakes. And keep an eye out for our next virtual um, cooking class, decorating class. We've got lots of ideas in the works. Um, and we really, really hope to see you guys soon. We miss you so much. Hope you and your families are staying safe and healthy. Um, and until next time, um, happy baking. Bye, guys. Bye guys.